A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. A Kipchak princess on the Indian throne, the dynasty of Delhi sultans, a father's daughter, lady of the era, from captive to wife. This story would not surprise anyone, whether it was happening now or in the last century, but it happened almost eight centuries ago. Medieval Delhi, a string of harsh rulers, slavery, wars, and huge harems. And suddenly, here she comes. Razia Sultan was from the dynasty of Kipchaks, originally from the family of Shamsia. They sang legends about her violating secular order. She was daring and brave, fragile and dreamy, a Kipchak princess on the Indian throne. The India was uh, ruled by kings who are normally called as Muslim kings. But they were actually, all of them were of Turkic origin from the steppe. The Czech... Kipchaks played a major role in world politics of the 13th and 14th centuries. Iltutmish said during his life that Razia Begim would be his successor. Razia Begim. Chapter 1 The Dynasty of Delhi Sultans. Once upon a time, over this white marble tombstone towered an impressive dome, Delhi, one of the oldest Muslim tombs in India, a tribute to the daughter of the memory of her father. This is the grave of Il Tutmish. He ruled from 1211 to 1236. He was an adopted son of Aybak. In many ways, he repeated the fate of his adoptive father, the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate, Aybak, or Aybek Kutub al-Din of Kipchak origin. And he was sold into slavery as a child. But he was brought up equal with the sons of his new master, a well-known judge. After his death, the heirs did not follow their father's will, and instead of releasing the young man, they sent him to the market of slaves. The last sultan of the Gurid dynasty not only bought Aybek back, but also made him the governor of Delhi. There was no class system. And, and your, your contribution to society was based on your skill. After the death of the Sultan in 1205, Kutub Adlin announced the independence of Delhi from the Gurids and founded a new dynasty. The, the Mamluk tradition, the Mamluk tradition, tradition of having slave dynasties, the most democratic of all dynasties, where slave should be the king. Delhi and the north of India were part of the Delhi Sultanate, which was founded by Aybek Khan. He ruled for a short time, but in a mysterious way, the life of Kutub ad -Din was interrupted not on the battlefield, but when he was playing polo. The Sultan was very fond of this sport, and the Turks called him Chogan. But there was no one to leave the inheritance for, and he had three daughters and a son who were not interested in politics at all. Almost immediately, the new Sultan was replaced by his son-in-law. Iltutmish was from a noble Turkic family, but in his childhood he was sold into slavery and he was brought by Aybek, and then the fate of the boy changed dramatically. Kutub ad-Din brought him up as a son. Iltutmish became his son for real. He married one of his daughters of the Delhi Sultan. Turkan Khatun was educated and knew several languages. Shams ad-Din Iltutmish Il controlled vast territories from the Indus to the Ganges, including Bengali territory. Shams ad-Din expanded the borders of the state left by Aybek and continued the policy of his father-in-law. The Sultanate blossomed before his eyes. Iltutmish did a lot of construction work while supporting science and art. When the, the Kipchak Mamluks uh, has formed the Delhi Sultanate. The, the empire settled in Delhi. More and more often, Iltutmish Sultan had sad thoughts. As with Aybek, he did not know who would take the throne after him. Despite all the efforts of teachers and parents, all three sons grew up to be golden boys. The princes were interested only in entertainment. 
сыновья были от разных жен. Он не особо доверял. His sons were from different wives. He did not really believe that any of his sons would be able to rule the Sultanate and expand its borders. And only his daughter made him happy. Kutub ad-Din Aybek would have been proud of his granddaughter. Clever, beautiful, a born diplomat, and an amazingly fearless warrior. Chapter 2. A Father's Daughter. The exact date of her birth in history is not recorded. The scientists suggest that Kipchak Princess was born in 1205. Razia was taught along with her brothers, but unlike the princes, she masterfully owned the art of both weapons and affairs of state, as well as the literary word. She was also fond of writing poems. Her father's favorite, Razia did not get along with her mother. She preferred hunting and riding a horse over beautiful outfits, jewels and other female toys. The woman, contrary to Muslim traditions, didn't wear Muslim clothes, but instead wore men's trousers, armor, and had a short haircut. And in general, all this caused certain resistance. It's strange, but Rezia never married, and she was already 30 years old at the time. Historians disagree, maybe the date of birth was incorrect, or, which is not typical for that time, the father gave the princess the right to choose her future husband. They say that she was a beautiful woman, and the only Muslim ruler declared heiress during the lifetime of the reigning monarch. Sultan Iltutmish discerned in her countenance the signs of power and bravery, and although she was a girl and lived a life of ease, when she returned from the conquest of Gwalior, he directed his secretary, who was the director of the government, to put her name in writing as heiress of the kingdom and successor to the throne. Siraj ad-Din al-Juzdjani, Tabakat i Nasiri. The decision of Iltutmush was to divide the Delhi Sultanate after his death into two parts. In April 1236, the Turkic nobility did not want to recognize her as the rightful ruler, and she hadn't even gotten married by that time. The eldest son of the deceased Sultan inherited the throne instead, a character who went down in history with his stories. After drinking too much wine, the prince often rode an elephant to urban markets, scattering silver and gold about him. He had no interest in affairs of state. His mother, Turkan Khatun, ruled the Sultanate and gradually began to get rid of the other heirs. According to the Arab traveler Ibn Battuta, when the prince was in the mosque, Razia, wearing beggar's clothes, climbed onto the roof and turned to the people. And she said, My brother, Rukan al-Din, destroyed our brother, and now he wants to get rid of me. She also reminded people of the justice, generosity and charity of her father. People burst into the mosque, grabbed Rukhan ad-Din. Razia said, the murderer must be killed. Bakhriye Uchop, women rulers in Muslim states. Picture of Dasha. She was able to expose the evil plot of her brother, and although they had the same mother, Turkan Khatun, he was still executed. The new sultan could not hold onto the throne even for several months. By November of 1236, the fifth ruler of the Delhi Sultanate was Jalat ad-Din Razia Sultan Bint il Tutmush. Chapter 3 Lady of the Era Sultan Razia was a great monarch. She was wise, just and generous, a benefactor to her kingdom, a dispenser of justice, the protector of her subjects, and the leader of her armies. She was endowed with all the qualities befitting a king, but she was not born a man, and for that reason, in the estimation of other men, and all these virtues were worthless. Siraj ad-Din al-Juzdjani, Tabakat i Nasiri. For that, she was never forgiven. But we will talk about the sad things later. 
She's the first woman of the Sultan and a worthy ruler. As soon as she started to reign on the throne, Razia revived the best traditions of her father and grandfather. She attracted scientists, artists, poets, architects to the Sultanate. Many of the historical monuments, including the mausoleum of her father, were under construction during her reign. Razia Begin is known in history as a ruler, whose name is known throughout Central Asia and the Middle East because she was nicknamed the nurse of the world. The treasury was replenished with coins with a new mintage. The support of women, the mistress of the era, Sultan Razia, the daughter of Shams al-Din Iltutmush. The golden period of the history of the Sultanate was not easy for her. From early morning until far after midnight, she was involved in legal proceedings, state and military administration, and she also personally led military campaigns. On the one hand, she was able to negotiate with the elite, and on the other hand, she was very successful using strife between the individual rulers of the Delhi Sultanate, in particular the governors. In India, the base of the army was made up of nomads who came from Turkic tribes. Therefore, naturally, if you were able to build a system of relations with a large number of Turkic tribes, then you had a great military advantage. And yet, she failed to break the stereotypes. Increasing irritation due to the actions of an overly independent ruler were growing. The same Turks launched an opposition campaign against her, and among them were those who were dissatisfied with her lifestyle. She had several favorites. Despite the rumors, these favorites were not her lovers. Scientists believe they were just loyal subjects. One of the former slaves of Altunia for perfect performance of her duties, Razia presented with territories in a fortress. She promoted the other to the rank of Emir Kajib, more simply a ceremonial master. The special discontent with the nobility was caused by the appointment of a representative of non-Turkic blood, Emir of the Emirs, the highest title after her own. The Turkic commanders were jealous of honors she bestowed on native Ethiopians, and she was overthrown because of this. Inspired by success, she seemed to stop noticing the hate. But it grew increasingly. When Razia finally changed her style and started to wear men's clothes, she even began to appear in such clothes in front of the people. People often saw their ruler on an elephant armed with bows and arrows. When the Turkic emir saw the Ethiopian Jamal ad-Din Yakut as he was helping Razia riding the elephant, they were enraged with envy and spread rumors about her. It is possible that there was no such closeness between Razia and the appointed emir. However, they used the situation as a serious reason for undermining her authority. In the long run, this turned out badly for Razia and Jamal ad-Din Yakut. Bahriye Uchok, Women Rulers in Muslim States. The first uprising was raised by the governor in Lahore, not without bloodshed. Thanks to diplomatic talent alone, she resolved the conflict. Not having time to return to Delhi, she went with the army to the insurgent province, the very one that she gave to Altunia. However, the governor she appointed, a loyal supporter, betrayed her. Luck abandoned Razia. The Ethiopian Jamal Adin Yakut was killed, and she herself was taken prisoner. Epilogue, from captive to wife. For almost four years officially, and what is more important, Sultan Razia had held huge power in her hands. In a country where she was loved by her people, betrayed by those whom she had counted on, one of them was Altunia. However, it was so unambiguous, could it be the usual male jealousy? Because according to historical data, soon Razia and Altunia were married. He was fascinated by the policy pursued by Razia Sultan. And together they went on to win their kingdom. 
the Sultan of Razia and Antonia. There were dozens of legends about their love story, but this requires a separate program.